Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. It was my channel's third anniversary yesterday on Halloween. And I thought I would do a Q&A. But it was kind of a last minute idea and I only asked for questions on a community post so I'm not sure how many of you actually saw that <laughs> I only got six questions but I'm going to answer them to the best of my ability and very thoroughly even if that means that I go off on a tangent, but I hope this soft spoken answering session will be cozy and relaxing for you. And maybe if you want, drop a comment with a question, and maybe next month I'll do another Q&A. If it gets enough traction, maybe I can do this as a monthly thing. Um, anyway, a little update on my life before I get into any of the questions. Since it is my third anniversary, and also it was my birthday at the beginning of October. Um, I wanted to treat myself to a new ASMR setup for a while. The last large diaphragm condenser microphones that I used for more detailed soft spoken sounds, um, one of them had some grounding issues, so it was producing a pretty annoying buzz. And I just wanted to get some replacement large diaphragm condenser microphones so I could do some more close-up soft-spoken stuff that has a little more detail on my voice than the uh, lavalier microphones that I use inside the silicone ears which are great for reproducing some personal attention sounds Anyway, long story short, I did treat myself to some new microphones and I have another video where I talk more about that and brush the fluffy windscreens and get them all nice and back in shape in another video a little later this week. So, anyway, so because I treated myself to some new microphones um, and also work has been a little slow lately I thought I would get back into making some more ASMR content over the past year I've mostly only been doing it um, like once a month because I've been so busy with work trying to keep on top of client demands and deadlines. But, since it's closer to the end of the year now, I have some more free time. Um, things are slowing down and I would like to make some more ASMR content because I know it helps people relax and it helps me relax and <laughs> In a selfish kind of way, I feel like it makes me a better person. So I have that 
lots to gain from it too. Like I feel like recording ASMR and even though you aren't physically here with me, I feel like it makes me more empathetic and more attuned to others, other people's needs. Because when I record these, I have to be more mindful about the tone and volume of my voice. And it does help me in a therapeutic kind of way to just slow down a bit and help myself relax because since I've been working so hard this year, I haven't really had the chance to just take a moment and tune in to myself and my emotions and my thoughts. I have had the opportunity to play some video games over the past year, but I really enjoyed them. <laughs> but the problem is, is that it's mostly just drowning out the mental noise, so I'm not really in tune with myself. And I just started speaking to a new th therapist. I loved my old therapist, but, um, there some changes in insurance, so she couldn't see me anymore. So now, I hope my new therapist will be right for me. We've only had one session so far, and <laughs> she recommended, in my terms, not hers, to go out and touch grass. Because <laughs> I do spend a lot of time indoors, especially in my booth, just recording auditions and recording jobs for clients. And I haven't really had the chance to go out and just listen to the sounds of nature. So, last Friday, after my first session with her, um, I live near a marsh and I went on at a walk close enough to where the edge of civilization is. <laughs> and I just stood there and it was interesting. Because for the first few seconds or a minute or so, all I heard was the sound of the freeway behind me. The cars moving, the squeaking of the brakes, the roaring of the engine. Then as I stood there, just taking in deep breaths, the focus of my ears changed. And I don't know if, if it was a mental thing or if the wind had just picked up because then, instead of the unpleasant sounds of the highway and car, and man-made things. Like all of a sudden, the sounds of nature were amplified. And I could hear the wind picking up in the grass and rustling. And then some frogs croaking and birds chirping and insects making sounds. And also because I got a new field recorder, I've been a little more interested in going out into the wild and picking up some nature sounds. You might have noticed the very noisy birds <laughs> that I recorded and uploaded recently. So, yeah, that's something that I've taken interest in lately something that I've been focusing on. 
on in what my goals are. So, anyway, let's get on with the questions. Uh, the first question we have here is from Han. They've said, wondering what was the most enjoyable audio for you to record this year was, as well as what made it enjoyable, like the process of making it or your thoughts on the final result, etc. Okay, let me see. I'm going to scroll through my past content for the year. Hmm. Okay. From this year, I'd have to say probably ASMR cat sounds. And it's an hour and a half of sounds of my cat just purring and sniffing the microphones and then cleaning herself and just adorable little noises like that and I enjoyed recording this one because I adore my cat her name is Bubbles but I mostly call her baby or bub or pumpkin or bubbikins or you know or anything but Bubbles <laughs> um, and it was just Adorable, putting the microphones up close to her and spending some close time with her and getting all those cute little noises out of her. But she is a cat, so I did have to kind of stop her from <laughs> chomping the lavalier microphone. But yeah, um, cat video. Bubbles is almost 14 years old, and actually, yesterday on Halloween, I had to take her in for surgery. And it's gonna be a very stressful upcoming two weeks. So since she's nearly 14 years old, she's an older cat. And in some breeds, they lose the fat around their eyes. So their, f their eyes sink inward into their skulls. And then the lower eyelid curls inward so the fur brushes up against the cornea and causes irritation it's called entropion so when I was talking to this vet um, he explained to me that she would, she would be the first cat that he's done this surgery no, he's mostly done it in younger dogs because it's a congenital thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I shoved my baby into her carrier just before sunrise and we hit the road and had to drive like 50 minutes to this particular pet hospital with the doctor who knows how to perform the surgery. And yeah, I dropped her off and it's always a tense time signing all the paperwork to prepare her for surgery. Plus she's going in without any food in her stomach because she needs to fast for like 12 hours. She's going in cranky and hungry. 
And so I was worried about it, just, you know, the whole process of Anastasia and signing the paperwork and all that stressful stuff. But this was in my college town, which is known for animal medicine. And it was it had been a while since I had been on campus, so I spent the next, like, eight hours just going around and seeing how things have changed, and going, seeing if some of my favorite old food spots were still there, and for the most part they were. I did not, of course. <laughs> get the chance to eat everything that I wanted, but I had a good lunch, I had a good breakfast, some good tea, and I had a good lunch, and then I had some froyo. I was a little disappointed though that they didn't have <laughs> any pumpkin flavored froyo for it was Halloween. But I ended up getting dulce de leche and cheesecake froyo, which was very delicious. And I topped it off with some graham cracker crust and hot caramel sauce. Anyway, my cat is home now and she has stitches under her eyes to fix it so they won't fold over, but she has to wear the cone of shame for 14 days, and I specifically wanted to get it done now because I don't have anything really planned for the next two weeks, so I can stay home with her and make sure that she's eating enough. The part that I'm most concerned about is keeping her hydrated because with the cone in the way, she she's running into corners. She's running into so many things and I'm afraid that she won't drink on her own. I do have a syringe though so I can get her some fluids in her mouth, and I've been hand-feeding her, but it's mostly dry kibble, and I'm just concerned about her getting enough water. Um, anyway, so, yeah, the most enjoyable audio for me this year, that's probably what that is cat, and I also find, you know, the purring vibrations of kitties to be very relaxing, and if it's like right on your ear, then I find it pretty tingly. So, yep, there's a very long-winded answer. Let's see, next we have a question from the Jackhammer 7654. Are there any ideas you've had for future content? Not gonna lie, I'd love to hear some more aquatic videos like what you did for the ocean. Something about water being poured is so relaxing. Cool, good to know. Uh, I mostly have to be careful about putting water around microphones because, you know, they're expensive pieces of equipment and I don't want to get them ruined or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I, for that, the ocean meditation video, I sourced some recorded sounds from freesound.org 
And if you check in the description of that video, it'll have links to the audio that I used. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> I would like to do some more up close and personal attention kind of stuff. Uh, I got into listen the first ASMR artist that I followed was Heather Feather. And I've been listening to a lot of her older stuff, and it's the stuff that has to do with the scalp that I'm most interested in reproducing. And I've tried doing that with my own equipment and my own setup, but it just never quite sounds the same. So I wonder if I just need a mannequin head with built-in hair. And it's... I'm interested in creating this, mostly for myself, but I can't bring myself to buy the head. <laughs> Even if it is as a business expense. I feel like I have a lot of recording equipment and stuff already, so if I were to get the head myself, it would just be there. But I guess now is a good time to bring up that I do have a throne wish list. It's in... It should be linked in the description. And My throne wish list is um, listed, linked in the description and on the channel about tab. And what throne is, is a place where you can buy gifts for creators. And throne acts as the middleman between the creator and fans or subscribers so the creators can maintain their anonymity and privacy but they can still benefit from getting stuff from their viewers so on my throne wish list I do have a mannequin head with hair if anybody else would like to hear this up close, personal scalp and hair attention, then it's it's the first item on my wish list. And if you want to buy it for me, I will make video or audio audio recording, ASMR recordings. I will use it to record ASMR. test things out and hope the sounds are good for everybody so yeah that's something that I'm hoping to do at some point but again it's like it's something I want to do but if somebody actually buys it for me then I feel like okay so you guys do actually want to hear this kind of stuff, too. So, yeah. <laughs> so, that's their... Um, other than hoping for that to happen, I haven't really planned any other content. Lately, I've kind of just been doing things as I get the time and ideas for them. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hope that answers that question. Hmm. 
Next question by Creature Transylvania 8943 asks If you could be anything, and by anything I mean literally anything, what would you be? I, I'm, I don't have a fun answer to this question. It's more existential, I guess. If I could be anything, I think I want to be perpetually content. And it's not like it's ec ecstatic happiness. It's just to be content. Where everything is enough. And I don't want for more. I cherish everything I already have. And if something else comes into my life, then I'm happy to accept it. And this comes from being in a competitive industry. Like with voice acting. It's not you get one job and that's it forever. You have to continue getting more and more jobs to be able to provide for yourself. And so, there's a lot of competition too. And a lot of, well, if I just had this, then I would be better off. And I would get more opportunities or better paying opportunities. And so there really isn't room to be happy just where you are because you constantly have to keep working and doing more. And I mean, I love my job. I wouldn't say it's relaxing. <laughs> it can be very stressful. Like, not only do you have to be competitive with your talent, but you also have to be competitive with how you market yourself, how soon you get your lines in, how happy you can make your client by doing everything they asked of you and then some. And I'm just by nature a creative person, so I feel like even if I were to change my profession, it would still be the same. There's always going to be more. There's always going to be competition. And you don't really get enough time to just relax and soak it in. And maybe that's a character flaw of mine. That I don't really get to savor each moment that I bombard myself with work. But, I do keep a gratitude journal that I try to write in every day three things that 
happened within the past 24 hours that I'm grateful for. And most of the time, I just write things that I accomplished, which is something I need to work on because I don't think it's healthy to tie my self-worth to how productive I am. And that goes into hustle culture and capitalism and all that icky stuff that does not help our culture to be happier and mentally healthier. So, TLDR, if I could be anything, I want to be perpetually content. Going on to the next question, Neko King 8330 asks, What's your favorite Pokemon? give an answer and not to say meh, but to give an actual answer. I'll say Snorlax. And that's not just because I do a smart. <laughs> um, truth be told, I don't play Pokemon games anymore. They're just not something I gravitate towards as an adult. But when I did play Pokemon. My best was Snorlax. <laughs> I love how big and fluffy he is. And his happy little face and big round body. <laughs> and then, like you don't expect it, but my Snorlax was super strong. So he would just, you know, knock out a whole fleet. But, uh, yeah, speaking of video games, the games I do gravitate toward as an adult that I've been enjoying in the past few years, uh, I do enjoy farm sims, like Stardew Valley. Theoretically, they're supposed to be cozy games, but of how limited the days are and how much you need to get done in a day, I find they can be kind of stressful, even if they're very cute and cozy. The time limit puts big stress on things. And I think the last time I played, I did have a mod. So if I go indoors, time stops. And that was similar to some of the old Harvest Moon games, where time only passes when you're outside. So once you're indoors and you're talking to the townspeople, as much time as necessary can go by. Uh... On a more indie level, I feel like I've been enjoying the stories more. I feel like they're deeper, more character-driven, and thoughtful stories in smaller indie projects. And that's most of my Steam wish list. Uh, I especially like I mean, I wouldn't say this is small anymore. I know they have gotten pretty popular, but the Ace Attorney series, um, super into it. I love the stories. I love figuring out the mystery. The characters are always fun. And I've been playing through other murder mysteries. 
I have a workout group weekly and lately we haven't actually been doing voice acting workouts we've been playing visual novels without voice acting so we could go through it and you know, practice our own voice acting by reading out all the dialogue for our characters and we played through Paranormicide which Square Enix had published and now we're going through 999 or the Nooner Games and I guess the newer version of that does have voice acting but we just turned it off <laughs> and it's funny like listening to your friends voice acting you get so used to their portrayal of the characters that when you turn the voice acting back on or watch a scene on YouTube and as the official voice acting it's like oh that's not the voice I expected to come out of them I mean it does fit them but you're just used to listening to your friends voices <laughs> yeah on the more bigger console games uh, I like action adventure games I played Tears of the Kingdom earlier this year and got really into it um, um, I'm not sure if you would call it a first person shooter but I was really into the Dishonored games too uh, I really like how you can the stealth factor and the Dishonored games anyway have the option of not killing anybody and I really like the alternatives of <laughs> screwing over these characters like you could ruin their reputation get them to expose themselves in other ways so that you know their lives are still ruined without them having to die or like in Dishonored 2 you <laughs> scramble genius's brain so he is effectively harmless and it's it's missed I feel like the punishment for the non-lethal meth methods are so much more brutal and so much more interesting because, you know, if you kill them, they don't have to live with the consequences of their actions. But if you let them live and ruin their lives, then you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I used to also really be into the Final Fantasy JRPG. And I'm still really into some JRPGs. I enjoyed Xenoblade 3. Um, I did have a lot of issues with the hand holding and the constant cutscenes. It's like, I just want to beat this monster. Do you have to give me a cutscene when I'm halfway? But yeah, the, um, the concept was a bit hard to grab your head around, but once you get into it, the story is really good. And I always like JRPGs for their stories and characters. But I feel like the Final Fantasy series has kind of been slipping. I mean, they used to be like S tier, but now they're Seven remake. I won't go into it out there. Um, and I haven't played. 
played Final Fantasy 16, so I can't really say much about that one. But yeah, those are the kinds of games that I play instead of Pokemon. <laughs> no. Trade for Trade 792 asks, Do you have more than one cat? Uh, as far as saying that a cat is mine, I only have Bubbles, and yeah, she is only one cat, but there were some outdoor cats that we had been feeding. One of them we called Ginger Kitty. She's a ginger tabby with a shorter tail than usual, so I wonder if she was born that way or if something had happened to her, sh her tail. It's maybe like three quarters the length of a normal cat tail. And she was really sweet. I would feed her, and sometimes when I went out to do some yard work, or if I wanted to read outside, she would come by and sit in my lap, and Bobbikins doesn't do that. <laughs> she doesn't like being a lap cat. She doesn't like being held. But Ginger Kitty would do that. I don't know if she and Bobbikins had gotten into a fight, like, a long time ago, like ten years ago. Um, that's when I decided to keep Bubbakins inside as an indoor-only cat because she had developed pyothorax and because she had gotten hurt somehow. I don't know if it was from a fight with another cat or what, but after that whole scare, I was like, you are going to stay indoors now. And then there was a tuxedo cat named Blackjack, and he had a, he had a collar on with the name Blackjack, so that's why he has a proper name. <laughs> and he was very sweet, he was, you know, bigger because he was a boy, and he just wanted cuddles and food. The thing is, though, there was another tuxedo cat looks a lot like him, but his face is kind of grumpy looking. <laughs> and his pupils are usually really um, thin and slitted. So he looks like, you know, he's on the verge of pouncing on you. And I don't think he's neutered and he's very territorial and he doesn't like, he didn't like Blackjack being around. So, we called him Jerk Cat. Anyway, Ginger Kitty and Blackjack, I haven't seen them around. So I'm hoping that one of the families in the neighborhood decided, you're now my indoor cat and that they're having happy, safe lives indoors somewhere. But Blackjack, I mean, Jerk Cat, the other tuxedo cat, he still comes by around in the backyard. And I give him food, and I give him some pets, but he can be aggressive sometimes, even when I'm being gentle with him. If I, like, try to scratch his head, and he enjoys it, he, like, leans into my hand and stuff. But he would still hiss at me like a little jerk. <laughs> but just because he's a jerk doesn't mean that he doesn't deserve some food and love. So I try to give it to him as best as I can, as much as he will allow. So, yeah. Technically, I only have one cat. Those are the other kitties that I have in my life. Let's see. Now, Pantherowow. Pantherowow? Panther. Oh, wow. <laughs> 70 
37 asks, Is pineapple on pizza acceptable? Listen. Cheese? Salty and fatty and savory and fruit. Sweet and tart and crunchy. They go really well together. Like a charcuterie board with some brie and strawberries or extra sharp cheddar and Granny Smith. on a pizza with other flavors and bread and garlic. It's all really good and complimentary. Pineapple on a pizza, on the other hand, I mean, I'd say the rule still applies because it's tart and sweet. And it contrasts with the whatever cheese that goes on pineapple on pizza. But since the pineapple on pizza that I'm most familiar with is Hawaiian pizza with like Canadian bacon, isn't that ironic? You have something with, called Canadian bacon on a pizza that is called Hawaiian pizza because it has pineapples from Hawaii. But anyway, <laughs> I don't eat ham or pork or most land animals. I mostly eat. I'm pescatarian. So it's mostly fish. The protein that I eat. Or tofu. Gotta know how your tofu. But anyway, I have not had pineapple on pizza in a very long time. But I'm saying that the rule still applies. Fruit and cheese go really well together. And if we put it on a pizza, that's basically like the crackers that come with a charcuterie board. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> So yes, I will say that pineapple on pizza is acceptable. You have a problem with that? You probably don't know good cheese. <laughs> Some people have only had American cheese. And I pity them. American cheese is the say you have tried cheese if you've only eaten American cheese. It is an abomination. It is an embarrassment. It's shameful. So, if you've only had American cheese, this is what you need to do. Go to a grocery store and find some cheese that is not prepackaged. I would recommend Brie. It's mild and so creamy. And it goes really well on toasted baguette. It has a creaminess that you might expect from American cheese, at least when it's heated up. But the taste is so much more complex 
unique and interesting and you will feel like a fancy adult <laughs> if you eat some proper cheese so do yourself a favor Those are all the questions that I had and I tried milking it for <laughs> as much as I could by thoroughly expanding upon each question and going off on a tangent. I hope this was somewhat insightful and relaxing and if you would like me to do more of these in the future, maybe on a monthly basis, Feel free to drop a question in the comments of this video, and if I get enough, I'll try to pick it up next month and answer your questions. So, yeah. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a relaxing night. Or a good start to the rest of your day. Remember to be kind to yourself. And before going to bed,